All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at acceleration in 2D or in two dimensions. So we're going to look at scenarios where our acceleration is perpendicular to the object's velocity or at some other angle for that example. Um, so let's start off with some questions about um, what um, acceleration is and what the significance of positive and negative acceleration is um, when which we looked at in the previous video there. So let's start off with these three questions and see if you can have a go at these on a scrap piece of paper. What is acceleration? What does positive and negative acceleration mean? And what are the rules for adding vectors? All right, so now you've had a chance to have a go. Uh, so instantaneous acceleration is the uh, rate of change of velocity or the gradient of a velocity versus time graph. I hate that it changes like that. Groove uh, change graph. And what does positive ne negative acceleration mean? Um, it indicates the direction of the acceleration. So positive means up or right. Uh, negative usually means uh, uh, down or left, left, something along those lines. And finally, what are our rules for adding vectors? Because we're going to be using those. Uh, so we're not going to be using scale diagrams to do this, so we don't have to worry about the scale part. But we do have to remember to arrange the vectors uh, tip to tail. And we can do that in any order. And we can. we also then draw the resultant. Uh, goes from start to the end, is how I usually phrase it there. Okay, so that's the information we're starting with. And if you want to look at these things at the top in more detail, do check out the previous videos I've made about what acceleration is and what positive and negative acceleration mean. So let's start off with looking at acceleration in 1D before we then progress on to looking at it in 2D. So let's say, for example, we've got that, uh, an object traveling at two meters per second to the right. So that means it has a velocity of plus two meters per second using our conventional way of writing it. And it experiences a constant acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared to the right for five seconds. So some important rules I'm going to be making use of in all of these different examples that we go through. First thing is that if it experiences an acceleration to the right, it will experience a change in velocity to the right. That's the first rule we're going to use, and that's always true. And if acceleration is constant, we can also say that instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration are the same. So you'll notice with my acceleration in all these solutions, I haven't written a av um, because the average acceleration and acceleration are the same thing. So in terms of solving this question here, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what change in velocity we need to add to our original velocity to find out what the final velocity is. So that's what we're doing here. So we've had an acceleration to the right. So we're going to add a change in velocity to the right on this diagram here. So this was our original one. We added the change to it. And our final velocity will be what goes from the start to the end here. So we can use our equation for acceleration to calculate what this change in velocity is. So we can see if we multiply both sides by time, we can figure out the change in velocity is the acceleration times by the time. And we know that the acceleration is plus 0.5 because it's acting to the right. The time is five seconds giving us a change in velocity of plus 2.5. So I'm actually going to write those in there. So the change in velocity, therefore, is acting to the right exactly as we said it would in our first rule here. And if we want to find out v, we just need to add our change to our initial velocity. And that gives us a result of plus 4.5 meters per second or 4.5 meters per second to the right. So let's have a look at an example where the acceleration is in a different direction to the velocity as well before we start looking in two dimensions. So let's say we've got an object that's going at, again, it's going at two meters per second to the right. So that gives it an initial velocity of plus two meters per second. 
it has a constant acceleration of one meter per second squared to the left which means that our acceleration is going to be negative and you can see that down here in the calculations and uh, we've got that it acts for four seconds as well so you can see on my diagram i'm using the fact that if the acceleration is to the left the object will experience a change in velocity to the left so that's how i've been able to draw this vector arrow on this diagram going to the left and so then that's only going to produce a resultant which is this one here instead so let's actually calculate what the change in velocity is so change in velocity is acceleration times by time as we can see here our acceleration is minus one because it's acting to the left and it acts at four seconds producing a change in velocity of minus four meters per second or four meters per second to the left so to get our final velocity we add to the change to the initial which is what we can see going on here in the red two plus minus four gives you minus two which means it's going at two meters per second to the left now that's not what the diagram looks like and that's because we actually sketched the diagram incorrectly to start with but it doesn't actually change or make our answer wrong in the end it just means what we should have done is drawn a diagram like you can see here at the bottom actually the change in velocity is bigger than the initial velocity and that produces a final velocity to the left there okay so that's one dimensional stuff uh, that we looked at a bit in the previous video let's now start looking at 2d and we'll start off by looking at if the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity so when might that occur so we've got object that's going at five meters per second to the right so you can see on the diagram down here i've got that shown in blue and we've got a constant acceleration two meters per second squared upwards there and that happens for one second so if the acceleration is upwards the change in velocity is going to be upwards as well those two things are always in the same direction and so that's why i've shown that on the diagram here you can see the change in velocity is indicated going upwards and we can figure out what that change is using the same equation we've been using before the change is going to be acceleration times time acceleration is plus two because it's going upwards and that happens for one second so the change in velocity is plus two meters per second now we can see here that we can't just add that to the five meters per second because they're in different directions we actually need to use pythagoras to add these two things together so that's what you can see me doing over here in the green so if we um, add those together we produce a velocity of 5.4 meters per second and if we want to calculate the direction of our velocity which we need to because velocity is a vector quantity i can just use the uh, tan part of SOHCAHTOA so we know the opposite side we know the adjacent side and we can calculate that our angle is 22 degrees um, above the right hand horizontal okay so that's if our acceleration is perpendicular to velocity we end up using some pythagoras and trigonometry what if it's not perpendicular but also not in the same direction so let's say we've got it going at three meters per second to the right so you can see down here we've got plus three meters per second and we get constant acceleration of one meters per second squared at 30 degrees to the right of the vertical there so what we're going to do here is um we're going to use exactly the same approach so first thing to recognize if acceleration is upwards at 30 degrees to the right of the vertical this is a real mouthful it will experience a change in velocity upwards at 30 degrees to the right of the vertical so that's how i've drawn this diagram here um, and shown the change in velocity at 30 degrees um, to the oh, um, I'm just going to uh, tinker with this because otherwise it makes my uh, working wrong. So let's change that because that's what I've actually drawn. And then I need to correct myself in here. Uh, that was careless of me when I was working. Okay, now I can answer this question correctly based on this diagram here. Um, so 
Now we've got this triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually use the sine and cosine rules to solve this, but we first need to work out the length of this side here. And we can do that using the same equation we've been using so far. So we can calculate the size of the change in velocity. Um, now, we can't really comment on whether the acceleration is positive or negative because that's for dealing with where we just have going to the right or going to the left. So we're not going to worry about that for now. We're just going to calculate what the length of this side is. And this side is 0.5 meters per second there. So now we're in a position to use the cosine and sine rule, but not until we realize that if this is 30 degrees here, this makes this angle in here 150 degrees. So we need an angle that's inside our triangle to be able to approach this. So once we've done that, we can use the cosine rule because we know the length of this side, the length of this side and the angle between the two. So that's what I'm doing here. And I've then solved for what the velocity is, and it's 3.4 meters per second um, in the direction uh, here. And the next thing we need to solve is, well, what is this angle? And that's what I'm going to use the sine rule for, because we know the length of V and the angle opposite it. And we want to know the angle opposite the delta V there. So um, we can do that. Uh, so we can just use the sine rule, we rearrange it to make sine theta the subject and then solve for theta. And it turns out that it is 4.2 degrees in this particular instance here. Um, so there are a few other ways we could have solved this problem because you might not have met the sine and cosine rules yet. Um, if you want to look into those in more detail, um, I have made a video earlier in the series about that. Um, we could have solved this using a scale diagram if we wanted to. That would be a perfectly valid approach to this problem. And the other thing we could have done is resolved our change in velocity into components in the horizontal and the vertical direction as well. That would have worked too. Um, but any of the approaches should give you the same result at the end, so it doesn't matter too much how you do it. OK, so um, what to finish off with, um, rather than getting you to do some practice questions, I want to see if you've picked up the key rules that we're using, because if you remember these rules, um, then you can essentially solve all these questions. So three different questions here. So I'd like you to pause the video and have a go on a scrap piece of paper or something there. Uh, what would you answer to each of these three questions? OK, so let's see what we should have here. So if you have acceleration, what does that tell you about the change in the object's velocity? So the change in velocity is always, so this is a really useful rule, in the same direction as the acceleration. So we use that in all of these different uh, things in, in these questions in order to solve them. That's a really useful rule to remember. OK, so. What do you do with the initial velocity and the change in velocity to uh, produce the final velocity? You, you add them tip to tail. The uh, final velocity is the vector drawn from the start to the finish. And again, we've been using that fairly consistently in all of them here. So you can see our resultant went from start to finish, our resultant went from start to finish, and our resultant went to start to finish, and same thing again. So we've been using that rule fairly consistently as we've worked through. And just thing add in there, so we can do this in any order we like. So we could add the uh, velocity to the change, or we can add the change to the velocity, it doesn't matter which we do. Um, under what condition are acceleration and average acceleration the same? So again, this has been in every solution we've done so far. That's why this isn't a AV, it's just A. So uh, if, accelera if acceleration is constant, uh, instantaneous acceleration and, and average acceleration are the same. Because essentially it's been at the same acceleration the whole time, so therefore the average will be that value too. Okay, so that finishes off um, this video looking at 
uh, acceleration when it's in a different direction to velocity. And in the next video, I'm going to take a look at some common misconceptions that people have about acceleration, um, because when people are learning about it, I think it's one of the least well understood quantities that we use in forces and motion. So I'm going to make a specific video looking at some of the key areas people go wrong with acceleration.